And so he, he comes talking at those critical moments. He, he's aware of things that are going to happen sometimes. Uh, the enemy, his, his demonic cohorts. And, and so he said, you, the devil said, you better lay down here and call your wife. Your leg's broke. And so I said, no, my leg's not broke. So I hobble back up the driveway and back up on my front porch, and I'm walking back and forth across my front porch, and I said, uh, Lord, I remember the spider. I remember the spider. And I was crying with pain. I mean, I'm a grown man. I'm crying like a baby. Well, not like a baby, but I'm crying. Tears coming out of my eyes. I'm in so much pain. And I said, Lord, you, I remember the spider. I remember, and I, I refuse to accept a broken leg. I'm By your stripes, I'm healed. So I walked back and forth for about 10 minutes, and I'm, man, I'm, I'm in pain. I'm, uh, I've got to get out of the boat. I've got to walk on the water. <laughs> you know, we walk on things some people sink in, and we just, we can't do that. That, that the power of the, of the Lord is there. If we can just reach out and just enter into that realm of faith that just brings deliverance. And so I, I walked back and forth across there for about 10 minutes and and uh, the power of God just fell on me. I just, it knocked me down in a rocking chair. And I began to raise, I raised both arms in the air and I began to thank the Lord for touching me and healing me. And about that time my wife came up and I told her what happened. And that night I went to a tent revival. Uh, it had cut my leg a little bit and it was a little sore, but I didn't have any broken leg. I, I just walked on it, didn't limp. God touched me and God healed me. It's amazing what he will do. I, I know we went on to England and never dreamed what would happen over there. We had this man from Wales that with Victory Outreach over there, uh, actually had a, a hotel that he bought, Old Bush Hotel in uh, Abitaleri, Wales. And he's not in that city now, but he was there. He's in, a, he's in Gwent, I believe it is. And uh, we went over there and he set us up meetings all over England. And, and we went, in, went all around England and, and was down in Wales. And we had to go to a place called Manchester and uh, right there at Stockport, I believe it is. And we, we had got some new friends there uh, in ministry, but we, we left Wales and we had a meeting that night. And we didn't know it was, it was as far as it was. It, it was a, a long distance from from uh, in Abitaleri up to Manchester. And so we got on the motorway with the roundabouts. And England's a beautiful place, beautiful people. Like America needs revival. And so we had a guide with us from the... Uh, Dave Sansom sent his, uh, one of his men. They, uh, they kept a lot of people that were young men at that time. They have young women now that uh, also in their ministry that were getting out, of, getting out of prison or off the streets or whatever. They were ministering to him. And this young man had been touched by the Lord. And, and so he was going to be our guide to go to Manchester, England, to a place called Greek Street Baptist Church. Well, there was a group meeting there that the Baptist Church let them meet there. They were going into prisons, and uh, we didn't know that, that, that they were discouraged. They, uh, after that s service, that night, they were going to disband, and they weren't going to go in prisons anymore. And this same group, they, they wound up going into uh, Romania and other places and had a, uh, a house, rehab house for... Uh, people with addictions later on. They didn't have it then. They were just going to disband. They, they had a prison ministry. and So we started at New Manchester, and, and we ran into all kind of road uh, problems. We was working on the road and, and delays, and, and it was further than we thought. And we said, we got, we're not going to make it. We're not, we never missed a meeting in prisons. We, we're not going to make this meeting because it's... There's no way we can make it, so we prayed, and we kind of, we didn't we you know we didn't do any what we Pentecostals call wasn't a great prayer meeting, although we've had a bunch of them, 
uh, where there were great intercession. We did intercession. We just prayed a, gr a prayer and and we asked the Lord. We said, Lord, from our heart, we said, Lord, we've never missed a meeting, and uh, we we don't want to miss this meeting. Uh, Lord, we want to make this meeting. Would you help us get there on time? And so, really, it, it was a miracle, kind of like walking on the water. I mean. We were we were traveling up the motorway, and all of a sudden, this guy that was with us, this young man, and and he, and he was such a nice guy. He wasn't a real good guy because he didn't know the the streets, the roads real good. And he he had this uh, thing. He said, "Well, all roads go to the same place," and that ain't really true either. But he's such a nice young man. But he he had to just. He he got this rejoicing shot. He said, "Man, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened." He said, "Look on the map." So we was on the motorway there. We were supposed to go through this large city. We had we had missed. We were we were a hundred miles over a hundred miles past where we should be on the motorway. And we got into uh, Manchester hour and a half early. We had time to change clothes. Had time to freshen up. And we didn't feel anything. We didn't see anything. Some people said it wasn't translated, transported. I don't know what it was. But I know we went from one place. God uh, took us over 100 miles further than we were supposed to be supernaturally. And all because we said, Lord, we don't want to miss this meeting. We never missed a meeting. Ice storms never kept us from prison meetings when we were going into the prisons. And so the Lord supernaturally touched our vehicle. We had uh, nine people in that vehicle. Little Zuzu diesel. I'm driving on the wrong side of the road. Craziest thing I ever done. I couldn't get really get coordinated to it. Running 85, 90 kilometers or miles an hour. I don't know what we was running. We was running. And then we get there an hour and a half ahead of, uh, before time. Well, needless to say, the Lord used us as a great comfort. Uh, to exhort these people and they went on and like I say went on to the mission field continued with their work there had an addiction center uh, we're still in contact with those people and uh, with uh, one of the guys Teddy Bear they actually came here and visited us one time and and God can do anything he he can just touch and move and and just touch people uh, and cause things to happen that is just mind-boggling. If we will have faith, if we'll release our faith. Uh, you know, one time we, we went into Cuba and uh, we had taken several trips in there and smuggled Bibles in there and, and smuggled all kind of material in there that we had bought and some had been given to us by different ministries. And we'd go in as tourists and and so we, we went in there one time, and I, I contacted this friend of mine in the Dominican Republic, um, Mitchell Martinez, and I said, would you let the pastor there, and I'm not going to give the pastor's name in Cuba. Uh, he was a district superintendent. And I said, would you contact him and tell him they were coming and ask him to rent that old 50 Chevrolet that we usually rent when we come down there and we get about 10 people in it because it's an, it's an antique car haven down there. It's just unbelievable the cars, the antique cars they got. That's all they got to drive and they and they keep running. So anyway, Mitchell called him and told him we were coming and he didn't have a telephone but his neighbor had a telephone. And he lived in a city about 45 minutes from uh, from Havana. And it was a city of 100,000 people. So the last time that my friend Mitchell had been down there, he uh, the car broke down. He had been there across from the Dominican with another gentleman and the car broke down and so Mitchell, he didn't think it wise to rent that car so he didn't tell the pastor to pick us up at the airport. Uh, his idea was to get a, a cab and we'd go over there so 